Six Peculiar Things About Chuya Nakahara, According to Dazai, by Blowing Your Mind, Chapter 2. The Yokohama Skyline on a Fair Day. The Crystal Water of Beaches of Imagination. The sapphires women often wore around their necks. Chuya Nakahara's eyes. All the same color, Dazai's least favorite. Dazai was seeing the same color around so much, in fact, that he would rather gouge out his eyes than take one more look at it because it always seemed to take him back to the slug, and he would rather clear all of his thoughts of anything related to Chuya. Dazai had made a point to look at people in the eyes when he talked to them, to gauge their reactions and intimidate them with an unblinking look, of course. Chuya had made it a point to stubbornly do the same thing back, though the first thing Dazai had noticed was the color of his eyes. Light eyes were not a common thing in Yokohama. Japan was a homogeneous society, meaning everyone tended to look similar. There were very small diversities in it, though Chuya with his eyes stood out. And if his eyes were not enough, it was the hair, too. It made him an easy target, despite his shortness. It was easy for Daza to go undercover, though Chuya would need to change his looks dramatically when they were sent on an undercover mission. It was the only time Dazai had gotten escape from the strange association with the color blue. What are you staring at? Chia growled over his shoulder to face Dazai, who sat on the bed and lazily stared at him through the mirror. You? Dazai said plainly. It is quite amusing to watch you struggle to put those contacts in. Chia grew red in the face. I've only put these things in a few times before. Leave me the hell alone. As I watched as Chia tried once again to put them in, one finger keeping his eye lit up and the other trying and failing to get it to stick to his eye. It seemed that he couldn't handle anything delicately. Dazai snickered when the lens fell onto the floor and Chia watched it with a peeved look. This is stupid as hell. Why can't I just slap on a wig and call it a day? Chia growled. Better yet, dye your hair completely, Dazai offered. You would certainly blend in more with a dark color instead of your neon red. Neon red isn't even a color. I'm thinking perhaps black? Dazen continued. You can't get brown. That would be an insult to me. Chuya gave Dazai a deadpan look. Are you going to help me get these things in, or are you going to wait outside the damn room until I'm finished? Dazai really saw no choice. They were currently sharing a hotel room in Italy and while Chia possibly could have continued without a disguise, his description was still out there, and it was better to be safe than in punishment of Mori, as Dazai always claimed. I suppose I can lend Chia a hand. Dazai sighed, sliding from the comfortable bed to snatch the contact case from Chia. How does Chia want to do this? Chia rolled his eyes. Chia would like to do it however the easiest way is. Before he could continue, Daza swiftly reached for the back of his hair, tugging on it to get Chia's head to look up at him. Chia frowned his eyebrows and opened his mouth to complain, but Daza was already grabbing under his eyelashes and pulling the eyelid up. There was that color again, the one that mocked Daza wherever he went. They were still looking exceptionally bright today, despite the relatively dreary weather outside. Slightly more stormy than normal, both his eyes and the weather, Daza supposed. Idiot, is there something wrong with my eye? Chuya asked, an impatient edge to his voice, and Dazai realized he had been holding Chuya in that position for quite a while now. Remain still, dog. Dazai took the contact on his finger and ignored the way Chuya bristled at the insult. Now you see, putting in a contact is a delicate situation. You must not handle it too harshly or you'll tear it. And it will be extremely uncomfortable if you do that. Chia eyed the contact on Dazai's finger. I think it's ripped. Dazai averted his eyes from the depths of the blue to look at the contact. Mm, no, it's not. You just suck at putting in contacts. Chia started to struggle out of Dazai's iron grip. No, I'll put the thing in myself. Shush now, struggling is futile. Dazai brought the contact up to Chia's eye and simply placed it in getting it first try despite Chia's eye twitching and his violent attempts to get away. Wonderful. Now blink. Dazai ordered, and just like a dog, 
Chia followed his orders, blinking rapidly. The contact slipped into place, ellipsing the blue eyes and replacing it with a darker color, even darker than Dazai's own. For some strange reason, the sight was off-putting to Dazai. Wow, I don't even feel it, she admitted. His right eye was slightly watering and red, but unharmed. Yes, people who wear glasses much prefer contacts, Dazai agreed, then reached over the dresser and retrieved the contact case, fishing the other lens out of the case and holding it on his fingertip. Now, to make sure it's not inverted, you make sure it has a dome shape, and if not, then you simply flip it inside out, Dazai instructed. And surprisingly enough, Chia listened intensely, looking at the lens with multicolored eyes. And to insert it is self-explanatory. Just wash your hands before to avoid an eye infection. And don't fall asleep or go underwater with them still in. Chia huffed. You're being awfully helpful. Does I couldn't have that now, could he? He passed a contact to Chia, who struggled with it for a few seconds before turning back to Dazai with a tight expression on his face. Dazai smirked. In need of more assistance already? Idiot, we leave in... Chia eyed the clock. Ten minutes, help me get the damn thing in. Dazai sighed once again and got back up. You are not opening your eye wide enough. Be sure to get your eyelashes out of the way, also. And just like he did last time... Dazai got the contact in with perfect accuracy. Chia blinked more, and now both his eyes were watery and replaced with a foreign dark color. He turned to the mirror and stared at himself for a few moments. Huh. I may wear these more often, huh, Does I? For some reason, the absence of the normal blue color made Dazai feel slightly empty. For his own sake, Dazai wished there would be no more undercover missions. And that was when Dazai had found out he had some strange infatuation with the blues around him. Or maybe just one blue in particular. Though, while blue haunted Dazai, they weren't the only aspect of Chia's eyes that he had found himself drawn to. Chia's eyes were very expressive, a rare thing for someone who worked for such an organization of bloodshed and carnage. Dazai took much interest in studying Chia's reactions of picking them apart and dissecting them. Typically, all Dazai saw was the blank looks beneath shades from his subordinates, but he could study the stormy look Chia's eyes took on whenever he was angered. He could see when Chia felt alive, eyes sparking when he was enveloped with a familiar crimson and fighting. Dazai had always enjoyed watching from afar, knowing clearly what to look for. There had been an instance, only a mere week ago, when Daze had been thrilled to see Chia's eyes transform from a lustrous blue to a stormy sea with waves so large they could easily overturn a ship. A thug had asked something rather simple, a way to pass the time as they waited for their source of information to arrive. Daze supposed it was a useless attempt at small talk that had quickly turned deadly. When they said I'd have to meet members of the Mafia here, I sure wasn't expecting children. The man had a nervous edge to his voice and eyed Dazai. Dazai found much amusement in the situation. He smirked. Yes, well, looks can be deceiving. The man jumped a little at the hidden meaning behind Dazai's words, and Chia elbowed Dazai in an annoyed way. Can't I just play around? Dazai whined, and Chia rolled his eyes. No, damn it, we're on a mission, so take this shit seriously. Such a party pooper, Dazai teased, and the man watched their interaction, laughing nervously to himself. Dazai wasn't sure why he was laughing, though people who were scared tended to use it as some sort of coping mechanism. How amusing. The three of them were waiting in a back alley, hidden under the veil of night. When is your partner getting here so we can go already? Chia asked the man impatiently. The man scrambled for his phone, typing out a message to who Dazai assumed was his partner. He said to give him another five minutes. The man shrugged sheepishly, showing the phone screen to the two of them. Dazai scanned over the text message. He wasn't lying. Fine, fine, whatever. Chia leaned against the wall, eyes leaving the man to look up at the stars. He must not have seen him as much of a threat. Though the man started shuffling in a spot, 
eyeing the two of them warily. He must have seen Chia as the more approachable one, because he directed the question at him. Uh, so, how did two kids end up in the Mafia, anyway? Chia didn't look at the man, though he did not have to because Daze was the one who answered for him. I don't see how any of that's your concern now, is it? The man gulped, his Adam's apple bobbing as he eyed the exit of the alleyway. Dazai pointedly tapped his gun on its holster. And just when Dazai thought the man had gotten the point, he was still facing Chuya. And Dazai had gathered that he had some sort of strange fascination with his partner. Dazai watched as the man's mouth opened to ask another question that Dazai had not expected. So, where are you from? Chia stiffened, eyes still trained on the stars. What do you mean? He grumbled tensely. Dazai could see the crimson already starting to seep its way around Chia's skin. Dazai did not take a step to stop him, only continuing to watch as the man proceeded to bother Chia. Like, uh, where were you born? He tried again, taking an experimental step closer. That red hair and eye combination is certainly a sight. You can't be from around these parts. That was when Chuya finally tilted his head down to look at the man's eyes, and the darkness in his eyes and the annoyance on his face, Dazai's guts twisted. Dazai continued to watch as the red that had only been lingering before flashed brightly. An explosion of color filled the alleyway. Before the man could do anything, he was being crushed into the opposite wall, face first. Chia held the back of his head, anger on full display as he tugged the man's bruised face up by his hair, only to slam it back into the concrete, making an indentation mark and possibly caving in the man's skull. We already told you to shut the hell up and you kept bothering me. Chia hissed in the man's ear, as if he could want an explanation for the brutal beating, though it didn't stop there. Soon enough, the man's body was flung like a ragdoll, creating a hole through the building as he flew into it. Then into another building. And then another. Dazai's eyes followed the man's body as he destroyed a whole city block. Well, Chia certainly has anger issues. Shut up, Chia said, much calmer than he had been seconds ago. And it was something that both relieved and made him feel empty at the same time. Emotions were much too confusing for him. Then there were the times when Chia was happy, when his eyes shone the lightest they had before, much like the spring where things tended to sprout and bloom, a strange thing for Daze to compare Chia's eyes to, though it was the least questionable thing he could think of. Daze had seen Chia violently happy while kicking people's heads in, a large grin on his face. But to see him genuinely happy, Daze had discovered was a rare thing. So when Daze did experience the sight, he had mentally cataloged it. One example being when Daze had taken him to the local carnival. Of course, Daze was not a considerate person. He had not been the one to come up with the plan. Koyu had been the one to suggest it. When she had seemed to catch on with Chia's sudden work exhaustion, during his time of getting used to being a part of the Mafia. Daze had noticed his lack of eating and self-care, something he had not expected from Chia, so Koyu had been the one to force Chia to take the day off, and by extension, she also forced Dazai to help him get acclimated to the new environment. Apparently, her version of help Chia relax was to buy the two of them tickets and whisk them away to the annual Yokohama Carnival. Dazai had not agreed with the plan, though he would not speak out against it. Instead, he would show up to Chuya's door at seven in the morning and knock obnoxiously until he heard Chuya roll out of bed and stumble to the door to let him in. Much to Dazai's amusement, when Chuya opened the door, he was all ruffled. His hair was a mess, eyes drooping with sleep. They had gone on a mission that lasted well into the morning, and if Dazai had to suffer, then so did Chuya. As soon as Chia opened the door and saw Dazai, he slammed it directly in his face. Dazai easily picked the lock after a few moments and shuffled into Chia's apartment. It was surprisingly organized, something Dazai had not expected from Chia, though he was full of surprises. 
Good morning, Daza yelled into the apartment as he plopped down onto the leather couch in the living room. To his right, Chia exited his room, now wearing real clothes instead of the ones he had answered the door in, and looking far less asleep than he had been a few moments ago. Stop breaking into my damn apartment, Chia grumbled, voice husky from sleep as he shuffled to his kitchen to pull out an energy drink from the refrigerator, something that Dazai liked to mix with his coffee. But Chia wouldn't let me in. And for a damn good reason, Chia shot back, exiting his kitchen to eye Dazai in a judging way. Did you even get any sleep last night? And why the hell are you bothering me on my day off? Correction, our day off. Dazai smirked, then pulled the tickets from his pocket. Does Chia not wish to do normal teenage stuff? At those words, Chia's eyes went wide because they both knew that Dazai was not one to mention a normal teenage life or take part in normal teenage activities. I was not the one to come up with this. It's just orders from a higher up that we go out and act like teenagers. Dazai explained, and that still didn't make any sense, though Dazai was not about to press an executive for an explanation and simply take the win. Chuya seemed to agree because he asked no more questions and instead finished his drink, throwing on a jacket and snatching the ticket from Dazai's grip. He inspected them, then scrutinized Dazai. Carnival tickets? Correct. Dazai swiped them back and stuffed the tickets in his pocket. Now, let us go before the crowd becomes too unbearable. They also both knew that Daze had a strong dislike towards crowds, so Chia did not complain when Daze grabbed his elbow and practically dragged him out of the apartment complex. Though it was a slightly strange sight because the roles were usually reversed. Chia didn't seem to show much interest during their short commute to the port fair, though he also seemed to just be waking up yawning into his elbow in a way that made Dazai snicker. When Chia noticed him laughing at him, of course, he would kick him in retaliation. So by the time they arrived, they were both wide awake and stepping on each other's shoes just to be an annoyance. Ah! Dazai gestured to the ticket booth where only a few people stood, and Chia looked up from where he was trying to dislodge Dazai's shoes from his feet. It seems that we arrived. Chia took a long moment to look at the scene and take in the flamboyant colors and noises of the carnival. Even the smell was different. One of sugary cooked foods, then he turned to Dazai, and that was the moment Dazai realized that neither of them had ever been to such a place before. Let's go, idiot! And all of a sudden, Chuya was the one dragging him to the ticket stand. Chuya is certainly eager. Dazai pointed out, and Chia stomped on his foot for the tenth time that day. Just hand them the damn ticket. And how could Dazai ignore such a kind demand? He passed the ticket to the woman, who looked mildly scared of them. And then they were in the carnival for the first time in their lives. An interesting experience. Dazai silently observed his new surroundings. The families and couples who walked past them hand in hand. The smell of overly buttered popcorn from a nearby stand invaded his senses, along with the blinking lights and the mechanical whir of the nearby roller coaster. Dazai also noticed that there were a lot of couples. His eyes scanned the area until he landed on a large sign. In obnoxiously pink handwriting, it read, Couples Friday. Oh, wonderful. Koyu had set this all up from the very beginning. Luckily, Chia didn't notice the sign yet, or he would have blown a gasket, though his hold on Dazai's wrist was starting to burn, as he pulled them along past the crowd of alarming amounts of high school couples. Once they were free of the crowd, and walking along a row of food stands, Chia asked an unexpected question. Hey, idiot. Have you eaten yet today? No, and I don't plan on it. Dazai was being yanked forward once again towards the food truck with no line to it. The man who ran it gave them a strange look, and Daze was once again reminded that normal teenagers didn't necessarily wear bandages around their whole bodies. 
Normal teenagers probably didn't even look like him or Chuya. You're eating, idiot. Chuya's tone left no room for argument as he turned to the man and looked up at the menu, pointing at the typical meal of two hot dogs. Dazai simply watched the man smile big in a fake way and turn his head back to them. Is Chia hungry? he asked, and the redhead shot him a serious look. Hell yes, and you should be too. Dazai supposed he was doomed to be forced to eat every time he hung around Chia. Here you are. The man smiled, and Dazai wondered how his face wasn't cracked as he handed one of the hot dogs to Chia and then held the other one out to Dazai. Dazai made sure his disgust showed as he took the food from the man, and the man frowned. If it's not too much to ask, what happened to you? He asked, pointing to Dazai's bandages, and Dazai had sensed the question from a mile away. Chia gave the man a warning look, and Dazai waved his attack dog away. Oh, this? He asked innocently, tugging at the edge of his bandages. I simply got nicked, a shaving accident. The man seemed even more confused, though neither paid him any mind as they strolled past his stand. Dazai continued to people watch, and by the time Chia was done with his meal, Dazai had only taken a bite out of his. As per usual, Chia snatched the food from Dazai's hand and glared at him. If you aren't going to eat this damn food, then I'll shove it down your throat. Dazai's mind momentarily flashed to the couple's day sign, in glittery handwriting, and he smirked. Be careful, Chuya. One might think we're on a date if you're offering to feed me. Chuya's annoyed expression didn't change, and the food got closer to Dazai's face. Open wide, motherfucker. Dazai did, in fact, end up eating the food. And he also somehow ended up in a line to one of the most violent-looking roller coasters. Chuya had dragged him by the wrist and hadn't let go yet. Dazai didn't know why he agreed to this stuff. Dazai felt death overtake him as it was their turn to settle into the cart and get strapped in, though Chia was the one who did his seatbelt for him because Dazai was too focused on not dying. Dazai had killed many men and tortured many more, though a roller coaster was where he drew the line. The metal clinks of the track below them were rhythmic and steady as they rose to the top and at this point in time, most would be focused on the view of the port, though all Dazai could see was the all-encompassing blue of Chuya's eyes. He was light for a long moment, and the whole choir of angels sang in note D6. Then they were violently plunging downwards. Dazai would say that it was worth seeing the wild light in Chuya's eyes, even if he threw up in a trash can shortly afterwards. By that time a month later, Dazai had become tired of the color blue. He disliked looking upon the sky for some strange reasons he didn't know of. It sent inner turmoil to fester in his gut. Possibly because Chia looked at him with the same eyes. Get in place, idiot! Chia snapped in his face. What the hell are you staring at? Dazai looked away from Chia's eyes to scan the scene. They were at the port, overseeing an organ trade that was supposedly supposed to happen any moment now. Dazai looked down at his wristwatch, ten minutes ago. Alarm bells started to blare in his head, loud and bright, red, as his eyes darted over the area. In the underworld, one was rarely late to meetings such as this one, unless... Chuya, he said, voice stony, get down. A hail of bullets overtook them before Dazai could say much more, and without his warning, the both of them would have been dead on the spot. Though both of them had crouched low, Dazo was careful not to brush up against Chia as he used his ability as a shield, the gravity kissing the bullets and sending them falling to the concrete of the port. In ambush, Chia growled, gritting his teeth as he concentrated on his ability. Precisely. Dazo nodded as he trained his eyes on the glinting of metallic guns. Directly to your front, behind the cargo boxes. Then to your five. Dazai listed the coordinates of the shooters, and Chia easily flung the bullets back at them, hitting them each square in the forehead. Once the port had finally gone silent, with only the crash of waves, they rose from their crouched positions. 
Chia sneered at one of the snipers who had fallen from their perch. Did the boss know about this? Dazai hummed and thought, because it was not completely out of the ordinary for the boss to leave certain bits of information out. In all probability, the ambush was a test or an attack from an enemy organization. Despite that, they had waited so long to attack. They wanted information from Chia and Dazai. Dazai immediately started his search once again, eyes piercing through the darkness. This is not the last ambush, there is another. He was already grabbing onto Chia's collar to drag them behind a blind spot. Because Chia would not be able to handle another barrage such as that one. Chia ripped away from his grip, but continued jogging along Dazai. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? I thought Chia's tiny brain would at least be able to comprehend this. Dazai continued at his brisk pace. They are setting up for another attack, one twice as large as the last. Perhaps we should find some shelter. Though Dazai's explanation was all in vain. Granted, he had never gotten a chance to finish it. Something spilled past his lips, and Dazai could taste the metallic tanginess on his tongue as he spat the blood out. A single shot rang through the series of shipping containers, and the bullet lodged itself into its intended target with perfect accuracy. Dazai glanced down to the crimson sprouting from the front of his shirt, directly where his vital organs would be. He watched for a moment, a sick fascination numbing his mind as he stared at the blooming ruby on his white button-up. Then the pain kicked in. Dazai was no stranger to pain and suffering. Though being shot in the stomach, that tended to hurt. Red-hot pain flared through every section of his body until it was left numb and he could no longer feel his legs from underneath him. Dazai would have to hand it to the shooter. He was a good shot. Dazai could distantly hear Chia's enraged scream and the enemy had no doubt been taken care of by now, though everything sounded as if it were underwater. Dazai... A voice said distantly. Dazai! Suddenly the ground was approaching, closer and closer, though arms had held him up. Dazai blinked once, twice, and he was in a different location. The concrete was hard against his lower half, though he only felt the warmth on his upper half, and suddenly his head was being placed on something soft. There was a stinging pain on his right cheek, and when the dots dancing in his vision lessened, Dazai opened his eyes to be met with Chuya's upside-down face. Oh. He was lying on Chuya's lap. Chuya looked down at him, a deep crease between his eyebrows, and Dazai was tempted to reach up and smooth it out. Chuya slapped him again. Idiot. His voice was muddled. Keep your damn eyes open. He seemed awfully worried, even more so than Dazai had expected him to be. The injury must have been worse than he had anticipated. Dazai's mouth was dry, and he couldn't open it to taunt Chia and tell him he was being a loyal dog for dragging him off to safety. He couldn't even lift a finger to place it on Chia's lips, so his ringing voice would become silent. Dazai would like to experience his last few moments alive in peace and quiet, after all. Though Chia seemed to have a different plan, because he was still screaming at Dazai, pinching roughly at his skin and not letting him scum into the darkness, beckoning him. Stay with me. Chia's voice sounded oddly broken, and Dazai wished to tape it back together. Then Dazai saw Blue as Chia looked down at him close enough for Dazai to feel his hot breath against his bloodied lips. Of course, the last color Dazai would see would be the one he hated the most, staring right back down at him. Chu's mouth opened to yell once more, though Dazai had already passed out before he could even hear the desperate yell. Unfortunately, Dazai had woken up, six days later from a coma. According to Koyu, Dazai would later find out that Chia had waited by his bedside during the duration of his coma. It would have been a hard thing to believe if Dazai had not bared any witness to it, if he had not heard Chia talking to him as if he were awake, telling him of future missions the boss had scheduled them for, 
and telling him to wake the fuck up or he would burn his bandaged collection. He didn't. Or if Daze had not seen the way Chuya had looked once he opened his eyes. He had been asleep, hair messier than Daze had ever seen it, and fanned out across the bed as his head rested on Daze's thigh. He was drooling, something Daze would endlessly tease him for, though the eye bags under Chuya's eyes could rival Daze's own. Chia had jolted awake and stared at Dazai for a solid minute before breaking out into a rant, switching between yelling at Dazai for being an idiot and yelling at Dazai for taking so long to wake up. By the time Chia had calmed down, the nurse had already made two rounds to check on Dazai, and Mori was bound to be stopping by for a visit very soon, and the very thought sent a shiver down Dazai's spine, though that thought was only overshadowed by the prospect of Odesaku visiting him later. Chuya was still recovering from his rant, sitting on the chair with his knees up and running a hand through his unnaturally tangled hair. Then he looked at Dazai, eyes narrowed. What the fuck are you looking at? Dazai blinked, and suddenly he realized that he had been zoned out, staring at the blue for quite a while. Whether it had been the medication currently running through his veins, or the sense of disorientation he was currently feeling... Does I found himself answering honestly. I'm looking at Chia's eyes. Chia opened his mouth to say something, then promptly closed it, at a loss for words. Does I saw his defenses rise up and his anger start to rise, though all he could do was shrug shamelessly. Does Chia know that his eyes are my least favorite color? As I continued, and Chia seemed much too confused by the situation to yell at him. Though, for some strange reason, I can't seem to stop myself from looking into them. As I supposed he was being quite confusing because Chia's face twisted with many emotions, before it settled into a resigned one. You're high as fuck on meds right now, aren't you? That would be correct. The weight on Chia's shoulders seemed to lift as he sighed. Eyes drooping closed. You're a bastard. Move over, idiot. Dazai didn't argue. Instead, he listened to instruction for once and gave Chia a minimal amount of room as the redhead crawled up onto the bed next to him. Just say that you like my eyes and fucking get over it. Chia grumbled, settling under the sheets next to Dazai. I suppose they're not the worst to look at. Fucking finally. Chia shifted, careful not to brush up against Dazai's stitches. Now go the hell back to sleep. But I just woke up, now! Dazai clamped his mouth shut and relaxed back into the mattress with Chia on his side. He supposed that admitting it made it all more real, because Dazai would never be able to get the color out of his head. Chia's annoyed expression didn't change, and the food got closer to Dazai's face. Open wide, motherfucker. Dazai, 